Ooh, was that a good dinner? But am I stopped? I think we ought to turn in. We have a good day tomorrow. Would it disturb you a lot if I were to stay up and watch a movie on TV? I can't sleep on a full stomach. Why on your back? Sally, where are the towels? Oh, they're in the suitcase. What are they doing in the suitcase? Well, we needed some at home, so I just thought I'd... Sally, you're a police commissioner's wife. Oh, don't be such a cop. Everybody pinches a towel now and then. Besides, it's not really stealing. Sally. Hello? Yes, this is he. What? I see. All right, thank you. Sally? Mm -hmm. Where's your wallet? In the wastebasket, under some tissues. Oh, what's it doing in the wastebasket? Well, that's where I always put it. That way, if anybody breaks in, they won't steal it. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. It's gone. My wallet is gone. My credit cards and all my money and my cash and they everything. They have it downstairs at the desk. Aha! Uh -huh. Did they find who stole it? The maid came in, turned down the bed, emptied the wastebasket. The desk clerk said he'd hold it for ransom until you returned the towels. Oh. Well, would you be a dear and go down and get it for me? Mm hmm Oh, I have to put up the top anyway. And I want to check the stopwatches. Mac? What are you trying for, a new world's record? Well, no, I just want to get it set for tomorrow morning's panic. Oh. Unless you want to make it a challenge. You're the one that wanted to go to bed early. You know I can never sleep on a full stomach. Nice, isn't it? It was meant to be a rally, turned out to be a demolition derby. Plastic explosives. Is it your husband, Maggie? I don't know. I've known Al a long time. Well, at least long enough to know that he was an explosives expert in the Army. so scared for him, Mac. He wants to win so badly. Why? Why would he take the risk of getting caught? Just when he's on the verge of the biggest break of his life. The Big Ten coaching job. He told me about it the other night. It is just not so. There is a boy on Al's team. Mark Shea. You know, Al's kind of been bringing him along, and the kid is just terrific. 20 colleges must be after him. But Al has got himself believing that Mark won't go anyplace unless Al goes with him. Mac, he is a high school football coach, and that is all he will ever be. What's wrong with that? Well, as far as I'm concerned, nothing. I've told him I love him forever. But I'm terrified he's going to do something desperate to prove himself in front of all of you. Maggie? What's going on? Oh, Mac and I were just talking. Talking about what? Take a look, Al. Somebody left me a nice little present. Meaning me, right, Mac? Look, I know what everyone's thinking. Five of us competing for Mac Abbott's museum. Big-time lawyer, famous heart surgeon, Hollywood motion picture producer, you, and then there's me. 
Al Potter, high school football coach. Nobody's accusing well, you. don't have to. Sure, I'd like to win those cars tomorrow. Who wouldn't? But like I told you, that's not what I really want. I get a chance to be a big-time football oh, coach. Oh, Al, please. Besides, if I was going to sabotage someone's car, it sure wouldn't be yours. Out of the five of us, you and Sally are dead last. I don't mind last, but I do mind dead. Well, I didn't do it, Mac. You got to believe that. out there. We have no tomorrows, only yesterdays. Bittersweet yesterdays. I'll go to Charles. I'll tell him. Tell him what? That Billy's not really his son? That I'm not really your brother? That you are not really the daughter of Oliver Thornbrook? Hi, Mac. I'm watching the best movie. It's terrible. Uh, yes, operator, this is Mr. McMillan. Would you replace that call to San Francisco, please? Sally, turn that off. And if Mr. Enright isn't there, would you try his home again, please? Thank you. What is it, Matt? You're better off not knowing. That bad? Don't ask. Don't tell me. Tell me. <sighs> Somebody did a little maintenance work on our engine. It's plastic explosive. Why did you tell me? Do you mean that someone's trying to kill us? I don't think so. Not enough explosive for that. Just enough to blow up the engine and keep us out of the rally. Hello? Yes, thank you. I've been trying to get a hold of you for a couple of hours. You don't sound very awake. I just got off. 22 hours straight. With Sue? She seems like such a delicate girl. 22 hours straight duty, sir. Oh. Well, you're back on. I want you to come down to um, the Seven Palms Inn in Monteverde. Identify yourself with the manager and then be ready for when the rally cars come in tomorrow afternoon. Re ready for what, sir? Well, I'm not sure, but I want you undercover. This rally's gotten out of hand. There's been a few accidents, so I want you to hang around, keep your eyes and ears open, and see what you can find out. And don't let anybody know you're a cop. Right, sir. Hello, Sue. Charles here. Uh, I know it's late, but I wouldn't call you unless it was very, very important. Listen, Sue, I have to break our date tomorrow night. No, it can't be helped. You see, the commission... Uh, Mac wants me to join him on the rally immediately. Uh, well, I can't tell you exactly what it's about, but I can tell you that it's, uh... It's undercover. Well, I know, my dearest. I feel exactly the same way. I... Well, I told you the life wasn't easy. You know, it's a, it's like being a doctor. You're on call 24 hours a day. Yeah. Well, the only difference is that we make house calls. <laughs> no, I don't know how long it's going to be. Or how long I'll be gone, but... Uh, well, I'll be thinking about you the entire time. Well, sure, I'll call you from up there. You what? You promise? Yeah, well, I'll give you a call the moment I get back. Sue, you know, uh, I haven't said this to very many women in my life, but uh, you satisfy something very deep inside me. Yeah. Me too. 
Bye. Let's just stay on course and watch. What instruction are we working on? We're working on right at a yellow bell. Isn't that the Wheatleys up there? And right on time, I'd say. What's the speed? 31 miles an hour. Right. I mean, correct. <laughs> the next instruction right at the yellow bell? Uh-huh. I guess the Wheatleys didn't see it. They'd have to be blind to miss that sign. Everybody can make mistakes. Not Tom Wheatley. Not that kind of mistake. Be careful, Tom. What is it we're looking for again? Left at a schoolhouse? I didn't see it. Right, kiddo? Huh? I think so. <sighs> what happened? Just our luck. In first place by 300 points, and now this. Luck had nothing to do with it. Well, I should have known there was no schoolhouse down this cow path. Schoolhouse? Anybody hurt? Nah, we're all right. We're all right. Did you see who it was, Mac? No, just the back of their helmet. Well, take a look at this. This is the Wheatley's instruction sheet. Something's missing. The right at the yellow bell. Somebody's been doctoring these instructions. Do you think that somebody could have paid those motorcyclists to sabotage the rally? Could be. Mac, I was talking to Della Wheatley, and she told me to promise not to breathe a word of this. But it seems that she and Tom are in serious financial trouble. You just did. What? Breathed a word of it. Oh, just to you. Well. Anyway, about three weeks ago, Tom was operating on this man. Tom had been up for about 40 hours straight, and he was dropping a lot of pills to stay awake. Della says he's been doing a lot of that lately. He lost him? The man would have died anyway. Everybody knew that. It's just in this case, the patient's brother went wild. Lawsuit? 
Millions. Even with the insurance, if Tom loses, it could wipe them out. Which gives him extra incentive to win the rally. That's what I thought. Except for one thing. Why would the front runner sabotage his own car? They're in luck. We'll get them out easily. It's nothing too serious. Look, Derek, this rally's gone far enough. Now, Commissioner, we've been the through Wheatley's all this. could have been killed. My hands are tied. I've spoken to all of them separately. None of them will quit. And after all, it, it's their choice. All right. Let's have a committee car follow each one of the five cars tomorrow. I think we can handle that. Maybe about a quarter of a mile back, just in case. Right. And let's keep the five cars separated tonight. Put a watch on them. I may know someone who can help us out. All right. Let me get the window for you, sir. I think everybody heard you, Sergeant. Your disguise is magnificent. Oh, well, thank you, sir. Mrs. McMillan. Sergeant, you look awful tired. Yeah, well, I am a little bit. Do you mind if I sit down, no, sir? No, no, no. Go ahead. I've been floating bags ever since 2 o'clock, and frankly, I have had it. I only made about four bucks. It's a pretty tough way to make a living. Were you able to find anything else? Uh, not much. Oh, well, there's an awful lot of griping going on. You know, the sort of thing that you told me about on the telephone. There are a couple of guys on motorcycles who set up an accident this morning, but by the time I saw them, they yeah, right. Sir? Why don't you get some sleep? I'm going to need you tonight to watch the park. Oh, I'm fine, sir. Sergeant, how about a cup of coffee? No, thanks, Mrs. McMillan. I mean, if I could just lie down for a couple of minutes, I'll be fine by this evening. You don't have a room, do you? Mm-mm. Well, why don't you take this bag? Give us ten minutes to freshen up and get out of here and then sleep here. Okay, thank you, sir. I'll wait for you downstairs. Oh, don't worry about this evening, sir. I mean, I'll be fine after a couple hours of sleep. I watch the parking lot like a hawk. Stirring? No, not even a mouse. Good morning, Mrs. McMillan. Hello, Sergeant. Sir, no one's come near those cars all night. Except for Mr. Quigley, the rally master. He just wanted to check how I was doing. All right. Drive down to uh, Barclays Inn in Casa Marina. But first, get some rest. Thank you, sir. Bye, Sergeant. Well, we're off. Mm -hmm. They're the Nolans. Hi. Morning. Good morning. Hi, Sally. Good morning, Mac. Sally. Well, the cars are still here. It's a good sign now, isn't it? Uh, George, I wish I could convince you all to stay off the road today. Don't you think you're making too much out of these little incidents? They're not incidents. Somebody might get seriously hurt, even killed. All right, Mac, let's put it on the table, shall we? Because of one little disaster the first day and on the Wheatley's accident yesterday, Harry and Gwyneth are in first place by several hundred points. I do not expect them to remain there. Harry doesn't rally well enough for that. The cars can't mean that much to you. On the contrary, Sally, they mean everything to me. I've been subpoenaed to testify against a senior partner in my law firm. i become what is known as a pariah in legal circles. The fact remains that I haven't had a case in six months. My savings are gone. I'm in imminent danger of losing everything. But if I can win this race... Is it worth risking your life? <laughs> oh, Mac, I can handle myself. I have every intention of finishing this race and winning it. And nobody is going to stop me. Well, now, if you will excuse us, I believe we're due up on the line. Bye, Mac. Bye, Louise. Sure. It's nice and quiet. Any trouble? Well, there's always a few that get lost. If you get any more trouble, you haven't heard of any. Thirty-two minutes and nineteen seconds. How's it going? Well, we haven't been run off the road yet. No, better than that. Eleven points through six checkpoints. How's that? Hey, and a zero on this one. 
Well, we'll be way out in front by the end of the day. Harry and the others don't have a prayer. You know what your trouble is, Mac? You think cop 24 hours huh. a day. <laughs> We're expecting trouble around every little corner. Car, coming fast. I guess all these fool people racing around the county. She's a pretty young thing. My fault, Mac. All my fault. If I hadn't been trying to make up time, I could have handled it. You said you had no brakes. They just went. I hit the pedal and nothing. Who was following you in the committee car? I was. Just like he says. He was picking up speed going down that downgrade. I could hardly keep up with him. I still think if I hadn't been trying to make up time and going a little slow, I could have handled that curve. Is the car ever out of your sight? No. Well, except when we stopped for lunch back at that hamburger stand in Sentinella. And you didn't watch the car? Well, there was so many people there, I... I didn't think. Harry, I'm very sorry. Are you, George? I don't understand it, Sally. We we had these cars under surveillance last night, today. Now this. Well, they wouldn't listen to you, Mac. You did everything you could to try and stop them. Yeah. Sheriff, these people are staying overnight down here at Barclays. Barclays, huh? All right, get on over there and tell whoever's in charge I'll be coming down and putting a stop to these shenanigans. Right. Don't you think you ought to take a look at that car before they tow it away? Well, them little cars all look alike to me. Good looking, Hank, but I wouldn't be caught driving one myself. I thought you might want to look at the brake line. Sally, why don't you go on in and keep your ears open? You might pick up something. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to stick with the sheriff. I think you can handle this, man. Oh, well, he's a lot smarter than that's all. Hey, Sheriff. I think we got that fellow from causing all the accidents. Where is he? He's in the manager's office. I guess spotted him. Commissioner, am I glad to see you. Do you two know each other? What does he mean, Commissioner? Sheriff, may I present Stuart McMillan, Commissioner of the San Francisco Police. I work for him. Oh, that McMillan. Now, why did you say so? Well, I don't have any jurisdiction here, Sheriff, so I... Well, that's true, but Corvallis County is always happy to cooperate with law enforcement people, whatever the circumstances. Someone want me? Uh, you in charge here, son? Yes, I'm Derek Quigley. I'm the rally master. Well, you're not mastering anything for a while. This rally stops right here and now until me and my deputy can find out what's going on. Now, just a minute, Sheriff. You! Just a minute, son. 
Now, I'm confining everyone to this motel until we have a chance to question everybody. And we're friendly folks here in Corvallis, but we know our job. Big city, a small town, it's all the same, huh, Commissioner? Charlie, tell me something. About what, sir? How in the world did you manage to get yourself arrested? I don't know. It was a humiliating experience, I can tell you. I was just catching a few Z's. What? Z's, sir. Sleep. Oh. Shut eye. Anyway, I was in the lobby, and all of a sudden, this deputy wakes me up and asks for my identification. Well, naturally, I wasn't carrying any, being undercover and all. And the next thing I know, he's got the cuffs on me, and he tells me that I look about as much like a bellhop as his mother-in-law. You should have told him to call me. Well, I didn't want to blow my cover, sir. I think he was wrong. About what? Well, except for the circles under your eyes, you look very much like a bellhop. Thank you, sir. Come on in. Hi, Mr. McMillan. You know, Commissioner, everybody had lunch at that hamburger spot. The Potters, the Nolans, and the Wheatleys. So any one of them could have gotten to that Dotson. But if you ask my opinion, there were just too many people around. You know, I just can't believe that any of them would be capable of murder. Two million dollars is a lot of motive, sir. Uh, yes, but for whom? Sally, what's up? Al no Potter, case. for one. Of them all, he makes the least amount of money. And that bomb that was planted in your no, car? No, no. They're all broke. With the exception of Harry Jerome. Mac, it says here in this magazine... Just a minute, Sally. For instance, George Noland is broke. Well, you'd never know it from the car he drives. All the more reason why he's desperate to win. And Tom Wheatley? Fellas, oh, well, he's guys, a type. hey! Hey, maybe it's none of them, sir. What? Well, none of the men, that is. But have you ever considered that it could be one of the wives? Mac? That's interesting. Mac? Frankly, I hadn't. Mac? I'm sorry, Sally. What is it? <sighs> Mac, I've been reading here in this magazine. They've got pictures and everything. Shh. What is it, sir? Let's go, Charlie. Sally, call the sheriff. Have him seal off the whole hotel area. Keep everybody out. Sir, you've got the hearing of a cat. Operator, this is Mrs. McMillan. Can you get me Sheriff Faraday? It's an emergency. Sir, that's all. I don't want to have to hurt you. Oh! Oh. Pardon me, uh, miss. <laughs> Come on now. I just want to get out of here. trying to break my arm. Joe Smith, huh? I guess you must be Jane Doe. Here's his ID, Sheriff. His name is Joseph Smith. That's so. Huh. What's your name, young lady? Go to me, air. That's not gonna help. It's Bessie Long. Listen, Sheriff, if you want to toss us in your jail for a few days, go ahead. Me and Bessie have been busted before. Ain't nothing new. A few days, huh? First degree murder is worth a lot more than a few days. Murder? Mm hmm. Girls get on a rally this morning. Looks like somebody cut the brake line on a car. Well, don't look at us. We don't know nothing about that. You've been causing a lot of trouble. Oh, Joe, sure. We're cutting a brake line? Not us, brother. Why don't you tell us about it, son? Nothing to tell. Some guy paid us 500 bucks to run around. Changing the signs and covering up the clues so there'd be trouble in the rally for some of the cars. Who was the guy? Some guy, that's all. I never saw him. He gave me a call about a week ago. He owed me 250 bucks. Then he said the rest would follow after the rally was over. How did the money come? Cash? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you never gave me his name and I never asked. Listen, mister. For 500 bucks, I don't mind playing some stunts. But I never caught nobody's brake line. Sure. I just got a call from the hospital. And that woman's husband's down there trying to claim the body. Now, doctor won't let the body go, Sheriff. And this fellow Jerome is raising all sorts of hell. All right, I'll talk to him. Go, so if I ever take these two down to my office and hold them till morning for Judge Tuttle. Sheriff, would you mind if Sergeant Enright and I went down with you? I was hoping you'd ask. Mike, am I glad to see you. Can you talk some sense into these people? Easy, Harry. We'd like to oblige you, Mr. Jerome. You can oblige me by letting me take my wife back to Los Angeles for a proper burial. Mac, they're talking about an autopsy. That's the law, Mr. Jerome. Anytime we get involved in a violent death. Uh, you took out life insurance on Gwyneth, didn't you, Harry? Yes, as a matter of fact, Gwyneth insisted on it for both of us. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, you wouldn't want any trouble with the insurance company, now would you? Well, frankly, I hadn't thought about it. I just wanted to get out of here. But I suppose you're right. Call it off, Mac, before somebody else gets hurt. It's not worth it. I think it already has been called off. Courtesy of the Cabela's County Sheriff's Office. Well, I don't know how they're going to resolve it. About Max's collection, I mean. But for the record, count me out. Let the others fight over it. Uh, Mr. Jerome, uh, would you come with me just for a minute, please? That was quick thinking about an insurance policy, sir. Most men don't insure their wives. It's just an educated guess, Charlie. Before Harry Jerome became a producer, he made his first million in the insurance business. Well, he even told me he insured all his wives. Come on in. Hi, Mac. Hi, Sergeant. How did you do? How'd it go? Well, we fought the cyclists. And they denied having anything to do with Gwyneth's death. What are you reading? This? Movie Town Confidential, of course. Well, Gladdens my heart to know that you're forever trying to improve your mind. Don't be such a snob. There's a wealth of information for the discerning reader. Like what, for example? For example, the last time I was at the beauty parlor, I skimmed it, and something stuck in my mind. So I went downstairs to the motel beauty parlor, which is right off the lobby, and guess what? They had the very same magazine. Do you know that every beauty parlor that I have ever been in carries the same magazines? Doesn't say very much for the habitués of beauty parlors, does it? Well, it doesn't. Listen to this. Well, Gwyneth O'Gara fans, it's official. After three years of on-again, off-again marital bliss with thrice-divorced producer Harry Jerome, Gwyneth will officially become Jerome's fourth ex-wife sometime next July. Welcome back, Gwen. We've missed you. We knew they were getting a divorce. Will you wait a minute? I'm coming to the best part. Now I lost my place. Uh, incidentally, Gwen's not quite the dumb bunny she's made to play on the screen. And the proof is in the property settlement, which she engineered before saying I do. Up again, down again, Jerome may find his precarious financial empire, <clears throat> his precarious financial empire, crumbling at his feet if Gwen holds him to the letter of his agreement. Mrs. McMillan, Harry Jerome's got so much money he doesn't know how to spend it all. Haven't you read about those parties on his yacht? That's just the point, Sergeant. No matter how much he has, the way he spends it, there's got to be a bottom to that well someplace. You think that he hired those two kids? Well, if he really was broke. He has to make sure that he wins Max Abbott's collection. Well, why would he sabotage his own car? I mean, he was ahead. He stood to win $2 million. You're too logical, Sergeant. Charlie. Do you remember that case where the rich old lady's doctor caught the butler trying to steal a million dollar necklace? Yes, sir. I think so. Uh, he shot and killed the butler trying to escape, didn't he? Mm hmm. Look, I want you to go down to L.A. now. I might fall asleep at the wheel, sir. Well, I'll take a bus. This bus is running all night long. I want you to check on a company. Net worth, cash on hand, assets. Maybe you can get some sleep on that bus, Sergeant. I'll drive you down to the terminal. I'll pack my bags and meet you in the lobby. Fine. What is it, Mac? Something bothers me. What? You know that case I was talking about? The case about the jewel? The murdered butler? Mm-hmm. 
Well, it turned out that the butler didn't want the jewels after all. The doctor just made it look that way so that he could kill the butler and then use the jewel robbery as a diversion. Are you saying that these accidents could be just a diversion? That the real intent was to murder Gwyneth all along? Well, maybe. If Harry faced a huge community property settlement, now he not only saves all that money, but he gets a nice, fat, possibly double indemnity insurance payoff as well. Even if you could prove that those kids cut Harry's brake line, how could you prove that Harry hired them to do it? I'm guessing. I just don't think those two kids did it. Okay. I'll let you know in the morning. Mm Something like an early morning swim. Yeah, I've been there. Exactly where did that car go off the road yesterday? Right about there. Uh, Commissioner, I don't mind helping out, but I'd kind of like to know what's going on. I'm trying to prove that an accident was really a premeditated murder. You know the brake line on Harry Jerome's car was cut. Yeah, we sure have had a lot of accidents. But it was cut completely through. Now, if it were cut completely through, he wouldn't have been able to control the car on the road at all. Yes, but then uh, how... I think it was cut after the car hit the water, and I think there's something on the lake bottom to prove it, like a knife or something. But the only ones out there were you and Mr. Nolan. And Harry. He kept diving to save Gwyneth. I don't believe that. He was diving down to cut the line. Anyway, I'm going to find out. <laughs> Get an APV out on that truck.
Can I wear it to the party tonight? Oh, sure. I have a bit too much makeup on, that's all. cherish this trophy for as long as I live. I never had a trophy like this before. Is it possible that these suitcases are heavier than when we left? How much heavier could they be? Washcloths and towels don't weigh very much. You're a kleptomaniac. You know what I love? I love those little soft things that you wear over your hand and polish mm -hmm. your shoes with. I got a lot of those. I got about ten. It's locked. Don't you have a key? I don't know. I have a sneaking suspicion that I left my key in the house. Oh, here. Yeah. It's on my right front pocket. Okay. Where are your keys? In the ignition. Cross your fingers. Well, neither of those work. I don't understand. It's always open. Well, Mildred always locks it when she takes a shower. Well, then knock on the door. Well, she's not going to hear you if she's got the water running. Then you walk around to the front door, let yourself in, walk through the house, and open that door. Good idea. And if Mildred is in the shower, let her know we're here. She has a habit of walking around naked when we're not there. How would you know that? Well, I walked in on her once. What happened? What happened? <laughs> well, she screamed and wrapped herself in paper oh, towels. Poor Mildred. <laughs> Really have to dust this thing? Only once a day, Mildred. Couldn't we put it someplace where nobody can see it? My bowling league gives away better looking hardware than this. That was Derek. Just had a meeting with George Allen Tom. They decided to keep the collection intact and donate it to the city. That's terrific, Mac. Mildred, be careful of that trophy. We worked very hard to get that. Yeah, and it cost a lot of money, too. What with car repairs, food bills, gas, hotel. It's not the money, Mildred. 20th Annual Golden State Rally. DLBF, what does that mean? Look at it this way, Mildred. Harry Jerome's in jail, and he's confessed to killing Gwyneth. That's pretty stupid for a guy with all his money. Well, he didn't really have all that much money. Do you know that if Gwyneth had gone ahead with that divorce, that Harry would have had to open up his books? Harry Jerome is a thief of monumental proportions. For three years now, he's been picking the richest pockets in Hollywood. Swindled everybody. Well, still would be today if it weren't for Gwyneth. That's why he had to get rid of her. You know, he didn't even care about the antique cars. He just knew the rally would be a good cover to kill Gwyneth and make it look like someone else was responsible. That's why he hired those kids to change the signs, to divert the suspicion from himself. Okay, okay, terrific. 